All right, garden lovers, ready to dig into some serious plant talk. Always ready to talk plants. Today, we're diving deep into fertilizing a garden, a fantastic resource from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. Oh, they really know their stuff over there. They do. It's like the ultimate guide to giving your plants the nutrients they crave. And the best part, we're not just scratching the surface here. Right, we're going beyond the what's and getting into the why. Exactly, because understanding the why is like having superpowers in the garden. Absolutely. It's about working with nature, not against it. I love that. Mm -hmm. So let's say you've got your seedlings all planted, but they're just kind of meh. Not exactly bursting with life. Exactly. And your first instinct is, oh, got to be fertilizer time. Happens to the best of us. But hold on a sec. What if I told you that fertilizer isn't always the answer? It's tempting to think of it as a quick fix, but it's really just one piece of the puzzle. Okay, so what else do we need to consider? Well, let's think about what plants need to thrive. Good drainage, for starters. If your soil's soggy, their roots can't breathe. Makes sense. Nobody likes soggy feet. Exactly. Then there's sunlight. Just like us, plants need their dose of vitamin D. But some plants like it shady. True, some prefer a bit of shade, but even then, they need adequate light. It's all about finding the right balance for each plant. Okay, so drainage, sunlight, uh, what else am I forgetting? Don't forget about competition. Are there any tree roots nearby? They can be sneaky and steal all the nutrients and water. It's a jungle out there, or well, a garden at least. That's why it's so important to create a supportive environment from the get-go. Got it. So we've checked all those boxes, good drainage, proper sunlight, no root wars raging underground. Now is it fertilizer time? Maybe. But now we have another question to answer. What type of fertilizer? Hit me with it. Organic versus inorganic. Break it down for me. All right. Imagine you're offering your plants a snack. Organic fertilizer. Like a wholesome homemade trail mix. Exactly. Think compost, manure, bone meal. It's all natural, breaks down slowly, feeds your soil, and provides a nice, steady release of nutrients. Got it. And inorganic fertilizer. Think of it more like a vitamin supplement. It's kind of like a quick boost. Exactly. It's synthetically made, so it delivers those nutrients in a more concentrated form. Okay, so both have their pros and cons. Exactly. It's all about choosing the right tool for the job. All right, now let's talk about those numbers on the fertilizer bag. Uh, yes. The NPK ratio. The ones that always make me feel like I need a chemistry degree to decipher. I promise it's simpler than it looks. Those three numbers tell you the percentage of nitrogen N, phosphorus P, and potassium K in that specific blend. Okay, that does make it less intimidating. But why those three? What makes them the stars of the plant world? Think of them as the essential building blocks for plant growth. Let's start with nitrogen. The building block for strong, healthy leaves. Exactly. It's all about that lush, green growth. So that's why my lettuce always looks so sad and yellow when it doesn't get enough nitrogen. You got it. Nitrogen deficiency, it's a common sight in gardens. So what about phosphorus? Phosphorus, that's your root booster. It's crucial for developing a strong root system. Which makes sense because roots are like the foundation of a healthy plant. Exactly. Plus, it's a key player in flower and fruit production. Got it. Strong roots, beautiful blooms, and bountiful harvests. Phosphorus is a gardener's best friend. It really is. And then we have potassium. It often gets overlooked, but it's so important. Like, potassium, it's like the unsung hero of the plant world. Exactly. So what does it do? It helps regulate water uptake, which is crucial for preventing stress, especially during those hot summer months. Okay, that makes sense. Anything else? It also plays a vital role in transporting nutrients throughout the plant. Wow. So it's like the delivery service for all those essential nutrients. Exactly. And it even helps plants build resistance to diseases. Potassium really is a multitasking superstar. I had no idea it did so much. It's a powerhouse. But just like with anything in life, balance is key. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Right. Too much nitrogen and you get all leaves and no flowers. You got it. So how do we find that sweet spot? How do we choose the right fertilizer for our gardens? All right, so we're armed with our newfound knowledge about NPK, ready to hit the garden center. Shopping cart in hand. And then we see it. The fertilizer aisle, bags and bags of dot stuff. Where do we even begin? It can definitely feel overwhelming. My first tip, don't be afraid to really scrutinize those bags. Channel our inner detective. Exactly. Check that NPK ratio. And here's a little secret weapon. Calculate the cost per pound of nutrients for each bag. Okay, back up. Cost per pound of nutrients. Is that like checking the unit price at the grocery store? You got it. 
You want the most nutrients for your buck. Makes sense. Get the most bang for my buck, always a good strategy. Right. And sometimes those higher analysis fertilizers, the ones with higher percentages of NPK, might seem pricier up front. But they might actually save you money in the long run. Exactly, because okay. you need less of them to get the same result. Okay, that's a good tip. I'm all about those long-term savings. Now, you mentioned there are tons of specialized blends out there. Oh, yeah. You can get really specific fertilizers formulated for tomatoes, roses, you name it. So do we need to be investing in all these different types? Honestly, for most gardens, a good all-purpose fertilizer is all you need. Music to my ears. <laughs> Less decision fatigue at the garden center. So what should we be looking for in an all-purpose blend? Look for one where that middle number, the phosphorus, is about twice as high as the nitrogen and potassium. So something like a 10-20-10. Exactly. That's a great starting point. 10-20-10. Got it. Okay. Now for a question I'm sure many have pondered. Can we use leftover lawn fertilizer on our vegetable gardens? Ah, that's a common one. And I get the impulse. Use what you have, right? Exactly. But here's the thing. Lawn fertilizers often contain herbicides. Which are chemicals designed to kill weeds. Right. And while those are great for a pristine lawn, they're not exactly something you want in your food. Definitely not. No, thank you. So yeah, best to keep those two worlds separate. Lawn fertilizer for the lawn, garden fertilizer for the garden. Got it. Separate but equal. Okay, now for something near and dear to my heart, soil testing. Soil testing. It's like a health checkup for your garden. Okay, I can get behind that analogy. <laughs> what exactly does it tell us? Well, it gives you a snapshot of what's going on beneath the surface, what nutrients are already abundant in your soil, and what might be lacking. So instead of just blindly adding fertilizer, we get a tailored game plan. Exactly. It takes the guesswork out of it. Plus, it can help you avoid over-fertilizing, which can actually harm your plants and the environment. Okay, so how do we actually do a soil test? Is this something I can DIY, or do I need to call in the professionals? You can definitely do it yourself. Aim to test your soil in midwinter. That gives you plenty of time to make adjustments before spring planting. Makes sense. So, what's the process like? First, make sure your soil is moist, but not sopping wet. Then, grab a clean container and a trowel or a garden spade. You're going to want to dig down about four to six inches and take samples from several different spots in your garden. So we get a representative sample, kind of like taking a poll. Exactly. You want a good mix. Once you've got your samples, mix them together in your container and then take about a half pint of that for testing. And where do we send this precious dirt? Your local extension office can usually provide you with a soil test kit and tell you where to send it for analysis. Extension office is always there to lend a helping hand to us gardeners. They really are invaluable resources. They can help you decipher those results and create a custom fertilization plan for your garden. I love it. Okay, we've got our soil tested. We've chosen our fertilizer. Now the big moment. How do we actually apply it? Ah, yes. Let's talk application methods. There are a few different approaches, each with pros and cons. We've got broadcasting. Broadcasting, that sounds straightforward. It is. It's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Scattering the fertilizer evenly over the soil surface before planting. Like sprinkling spices on a dish. Exactly. Easy peasy, especially for beginners. Just sprinkle it on, rake it in lightly, and you're good to go. Then there's banding. Banding. Okay, tell me more. Imagine you're planting rows of vegetables, like those perfectly straight rows you see in pictures. I strive for that level of perfection, yes. Well, instead of spreading the fertilizer everywhere with banding, you're creating concentrated bands of fertilizer on either side of those rows. So it's like giving those plant roots a direct line to the good stuff. Exactly. It can be more efficient using less fertilizer overall, but it does require a bit more precision to avoid direct contact with the plant roots. Don't want to burn those precious roots. Exactly. Then there are starter solutions. Starter solutions? Those sound pretty self-explanatory. They are. It's basically like giving your seedlings a nutritious welcome drink when you transplant them. I love that. So it's especially good for those more sensitive transplants. Yes. Things like tomatoes, peppers, cabbage. They really benefit from that extra boost as they settle into their new home. The guide recommends two tablespoons of fertilizer per gallon of water, and you just pour about a cup of this solution into each planting hole right before you tuck those seedlings in. It's like giving them a little liquid courage. Yeah. Okay, what about side dressing? I've heard that term thrown around, but... Side dressing is a game changer, especially for those plants with longer growing seasons, like tomatoes or corn. Because they're heavy feeders. Exactly. So picture this. You've got a tomato plant that's starting to flower and set fruit. My favorite part. Right. 
While with side dressing, you gently sprinkle a band of fertilizer around the base of the plant about six inches away from the stem and work it lightly into the soil. So it's like a mid-season snack. Exactly. It's giving them that extra nutrient boost just when they need it most. It's also a lifesaver if you have sandy soil, which is notorious for not holding on to nutrients very well. Or if you've had a deluge of rain that's washed away those precious nutrients. Exactly. Side dressing to the rescue. Okay, now let's shift gears a bit and talk fall gardens. So fall gardens, should we be fertilizing then? Or is that just overkill after a spring feeding frenzy? Fall gardens can definitely benefit from some fertilizer love, but you're right, it's not about replicating that spring routine. Think of it this way. In spring, you're giving your plants a big breakfast to fuel their big growth spurt. But in the fall, it's more like a light snack just to help them through the cooler months. Okay, so less is more in the fall. Exactly. If you've already fertilized generously in the spring, you might only need about half the amount for your fall garden. A good rule of thumb is one to two pounds of fertilizer per 100 square feet. But of course, every garden's unique. And that's where our trusty soil test comes in. Always a good idea. It'll give you the most accurate picture of what your fall garden needs. Soil testing for the win. This has been awesome. I feel like I've graduated from garden novice to like fertilizer first class. I love to hear that knowledge is power when it comes to gardening. It really is. Now I'm ready to swap these gardening gloves for a lab coat and get experimenting. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners who are feeling that same spark of inspiration? Don't be afraid to embrace that curiosity. Pay close attention to how your plants respond to different fertilizers. Do they seem to love a particular organic blend? Maybe they thrive with a specific application method. Every garden, every plant, it's all unique. And the more you observe, the better you'll understand your plant's language. So it's about becoming fluent in plant. Exactly. Think of these tips as guidelines, not hard and fast rules. There's always something new to learn. You got it. Embrace the experiment. Now, for our listeners who are ready to really geek out, how about a little at-home research project? Ooh, I like where this is going. Choose a few different types of organic fertilizers. Compost, fish emulsion, worm castings, dot you name it. Oh, yeah. Get creative. Right. And then here's the key. Meticulously record their impact on your garden. How are your plants growing? What's their yield like? How is their overall health? A garden journal. I love keeping track of everything. Exactly. You might be amazed by what you discover right in your own backyard. You might even stumble upon the perfect fertilizer recipe for your own little piece of paradise. Now that's what I call a delicious experiment. Right. Well, on that note, happy gardening, everyone. Yeah. And remember, the best fertilizer is often a gardener's shadow. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. Until next time, happy growing.